Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Huawei MediaPad M3. This is a $300 8.4-inch Android tablet that, to me at least, reminds me a lot of iOS, just in its overall presentation of the apps on the home screen here, even down to the settings screen, where everything uh, looks and feels almost identical to uh, what you'd normally see on iOS. We saw this similar interface on one of their phones earlier in the year. Now, we're going to get into this and maybe how it differs from the iPad in just a second, but I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that this is on loan from Huawei. So when we're done with this, we send it back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into what makes this thing tick. We've got an 8.4 inch IPS display running at 2560 by 1600. So this is a uh, what you would call a retina display in the Apple world. Uh, 359 pixels per inch. It is powered by Huawei's own processor. It's called the High Silicon Kirin OctaCore processor. Uh, it's it's got two components to it, basically. Four cores that uh, run faster and consume more power, but are good for when you're playing games and other uh, high demanding tasks. And then they have some lower powered cores that uh, are good for web browsing and other things that uh, will give you extended battery life as a result. You don't really notice this happening. It will decide which core to choose based on what you're doing. And uh, the battery life on this is a, a good eight to 10 hours. And it's, for me at least, on par with what I've seen with my wife's uh, iPad mini four. So good battery life on this one. It has four gigabytes of RAM, which is very good to see on a uh, Android tablet these days. You can very quickly switch between apps. 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but they do have a uh, SD card slot at the bottom, so you can plug in a micro SD card, uh, card into it and go up to 128 gigabytes maximum without having to spend more on your initial purchase price. So on the iPad, of course, you've got to spend more to get more storage. On this one, you can add it at the bottom if that 32 gigs uh, is uh, not enough. It is powered by Android 6.0 Marshmallow. I do not know if they play on updating this to Nougat, the new version of it, but I will try to find out an update down in the video description when uh, we see that. Now at $300, this might be a little pricey given what we're seeing in, in the Android world. There are less expensive tablets like the uh, K1 from NVIDIA that we've looked at in the past. Uh, this one's actually a little faster also because it's geared towards gaming, but it only has two gigs of RAM and a lower resolution display, and it's also uh, got a plastic case that may not be as durable as the metal on this one. So you are paying a little bit for uh, the display the RAM uh, and the uh, overall industrial design, which might be a little more rugged for uh, folks that might need that. So again, an all metal design, very much like an iPad in its uh, look and somewhat in its feel. Uh, there isn't much for ports on it though. So you can see on this side, there is nothing to speak of. On the top, you just have a headphone jack and a speaker. On the side, you've got your volume rocker and your power switch. And then on the bottom, uh, just a micro USB port, no USB type C interestingly enough. Uh, this is how you charge it. You could also probably plug in an OTG cable able to plug USB devices into it. But you'll also see there's another speaker on the bottom. So you do get a stereo sound out of this and it actually sounds pretty good. I was surprised uh, really how loud it is and how actually detailed the audio can be on it. I did find you lose a lot of that detail when you crank the sound up and you've got a noisy movie going on, but I was really impressed with the stereo separation and the overall uh, audio quality on it. On the front, you've got a fingerprint sensor, which works very well. And uh, what's neat about it is that it's got kind of a multifunction effect to it. So this is a uh, capacitive button. It doesn't push, but uh, you can do different things. So if I uh, tap the button, I'll go back here, as you can see on my uh, browser. If I hold it down, it will bring me back to the home screen, and then I can swipe to the left or right and get my multitasking options up on there. So it has a number of different functions that it does. Uh, you know when you hit the home button portion of it, uh, because it does give you a little bit of haptic feedback, a little vibration when you hold it down. Uh, otherwise, it will function like a back button. So you don't have the uh, locked in Android controls at the bottom and then uh, you have all the other things you normally see on Android like the uh, pull down setting screen and everything else. And it's got two cameras on it, one on the front, one on the back. They are eight megapixel cameras. Nothing crazy but uh, I guess passable if you need to take a picture or take a quick video. It will shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second but nothing more than that. So uh, decent enough for uh, what you might want on a tablet but cameras really are not the main focus of this and again it really does uh, very much replicate uh, the iOS experience. Performance is also pretty good on it. I'm finding no issues browsing the web and doing uh, other things. Although uh, what I have found, at least here in the United States, is this does not support 
5 gigahertz AC Wi-Fi. So you will take a little bit of a performance hit on uh, the maximum Wi-Fi speed. So uh, do keep that in mind. I was not able to get it onto my AC network here at the house. And there uh, was some indication on their product specification page that uh, this does not support uh, 5 gigahertz in areas where FCC certification is required. But as you can see here, web browsing on here does feel uh, pretty good and responsive. Now, multimedia is a big focus of this device, so this is something that if you are a movie watcher, you might be quite pleased with. Uh, the display here really looks nice, especially in darker scenes like I'm getting here on this Star Wars movie. I have uh, Plex running right now, so this is from my personal library running with a uh, Blu-ray MKV, uh, but it also works very well with Netflix and Amazon and other services. And as you know, uh, Netflix and Amazon now allow you to download uh, movies offline to your device when you're on a plane or something, and Amazon takes it a step further and lets you download to the SD card. I did a video on that uh, not too long ago, and you can do that on Android and not on iOS, of course, because iOS doesn't support uh, SD cards. So if you are an Amazon Prime viewer, this is a good uh, choice perhaps because you do get a really nice display and uh, does play back movies quite well and they sound good both out of the headphones and out of the speakers. I did find though in uh, apps like YouTube here when I'm running video at 1080p at 60 frames per second, uh, it isn't lagging but you are going to see some drop frames. It's not as smooth at 60 frames per second 1080p as I would expect it to be looking. So uh, this scene should to my eyes look a little smoother than I am currently seeing it look. Uh, so I know it's dropping some frames along the way there. So I think it might just be a function of uh, YouTube's optimization or lack thereof for uh, lower powered devices at 60 frames per second. But uh, just know that it won't be perfect if you are watching a lot of gameplay footage and want really good 60p playback. Uh, at least at the moment, this one won't deliver that. And of course, you are hindered a bit, especially here in the US, if the wireless AC doesn't work. All right, so let's shift gears here and take a look at some gaming. So we've got the Minecraft Pocket Edition here running just fine on the tablet. So uh, good performance for that. Uh, we can also take a look at perhaps Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now you'll saw, see just how quickly I could switch between them. And that's because we have so much RAM on this device. When you have a lot of RAM, it makes it very easy uh, to keep things loaded and running in the background and not have to uh, wait to reload them in between. So you can, again, very easily switch back and forth when uh, you've got more RAM on your device like this. But things like Grand Theft Auto here, this is the uh, Vice City edition run great. Uh, Minecraft, as you saw there, also worked pretty well too. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot test, we got a score of 1,222, which does put it below the iPad Mini 4. But if you look over on the physics portion of the test, uh, the Huawei does a little better because its CPU is more powerful. So I think that will benefit you when you're browsing the web or doing other things that are more CPU intensive. But uh, the iPad is a little faster graphically. And of course, the NVIDIA Shield K1 blows both of them out of the water, but that is really a a gaming centric device. But uh, the nice CPU in here does give us the ability to run things like the Raycast Dreamcast emulator uh, at close to 60 frames per second. It's just kind of pegged at 59 right now, but I would suspect we're probably really getting a good uh, full speed uh, performance out of this emulator on here. I would not suggest this as a way of running the Dolphin emulator, which emulates the GameCube, but you can do the uh, Dreamcast very well, the PlayStation, and all the way back through uh, systems of the uh, 90s, 80s, and 70s. So the N64 should do well, as will all the 16-bit consoles and everything else. So decent performance out of here. Not as fast as the K1, obviously, but uh, good enough for a mid-range tablet. So by and large, this is a very good alternative to an iPad if you're looking to spend a little less money but uh, want the display quality and uh, want comparable performance. It definitely delivers that, uh, I think, pretty well. There are some little touches here and there that you'll notice if you are very used to an iPad. So for example, as I'm scrolling through this page here, if my finger starts resting on the side of the screen or my, maybe my wrist gets in there, uh, you'll see that it thinks I want to zoom the screen in versus scroll. And that's the one thing the iPad's been a little bit better at uh, is guessing what your intent is because uh, they certainly have very thinning bezels on these devices and it's not hard to get uh, your hand resting on the side of the screen inadvertently and it doesn't always detect what you're trying to do. So it's a little annoying occasionally to be holding the device and then having to uh, readjust the screen or adjust my hand to uh, get it to stop zooming and go back to scrolling. So a couple little things here or there that uh, you might notice if you're very used to uh, using an iPad, but uh, overall I think Huawei's done another nice job on uh, making a device that is very well built, performs well, and costs less less than uh, something that feels very similar to this from another manufacturer, so very nice there. Now you can of course buy something that performs better or the same for less money, uh, but this comes back to our usual discussion of build quality and display quality and 
perhaps in some cases like this one, having a little bit more RAM might be helpful. So you are paying for this industrial design, you're paying for this display, uh, but you can get in for even $100 less than this one with something like the uh, K1 tablet that we looked at not that long ago that uh, will give you better performance. So if performance is what you're after, you can certainly go cheaper, but if you're looking for something nicer in its feel and build quality and display, uh, that's why you might want to spend $100 more on this, and you can do that without having to spend another $100 more on an iPad. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.